So we just finished looking at how to solve a ODE, a Bernoulli ODE. Next, we're going to actually solve one. So just to review really quickly, we're going to multiply uh, by this really strange term right here. You have to realize, uh, figure out what n is. Uh, once you multiply by that, uh, you will uh, make some substitutions and then uh, you'll have a linear ODE. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and look at this example. So we got y prime plus xy. Looks linear so far, but the reason it's not is we don't have zero on the right side. So again, you do have to know the original Bernoulli equation form right here. Now we had one over y cubed, so that means our n value is actually negative three. So we're going to go with the n value of negative three, and I'll rewrite the Bernoulli form right here. I'm copying this from the notes above. And make sure I don't not use any force here, so none of these y's are force. Uh, our n is negative three. You could write out q of x if you need to. Q of x should be pretty obvious. That will be just x. And p of x, very exciting, also x. All right, so what in the world that we do? We're supposed to multiply, so this is Bernoulli, uh, order negative three. <clears throat> there was one special case when n is one. You don't do the Bernoulli, the standard Bernoulli method. When n is one, you have separable. Uh, but we have order negative three, so we're gonna multiply by uh, one minus n y to the negative n. Our n is negative three, so I'm gonna be super careful here and not try to reduce too many uh, easy arithmetic uh, expressions too quickly and cause problems. So we got one plus three, we have four, y to the third. So this is our row, what we're gonna multiply by. linear ODE in X and U. And of course U is going to equal something. U is Y to the one minus N. And I will circle that. I don't know if I made that super clear. So that substitution that we're focusing on is really right in this box here. So that's super important. And of course, wherever the original factor that we multiply by. So those are really the two important things out of Bernoulli that you have to do. Multiply by row, let's call this row, and then make a basically U substitution. So I'm gonna write that U substitution. Good news is you can derive it all right off of here. It's not complicated. So I'm going to take a Y derivative. So we got one minus N Y to the one minus N minus one. And again, I'm being extra explicit and careful so I don't make uh, arithmetic mistakes that will screw everything up. So multiply by dy and simplify that power. We just have one minus one cancels. So du is this uh, function times dy. All right, so I got my row. So now we're gonna multiply row into the original. This looks like a good screen to show. So we're gonna go row times dy dx plus p 
PXY equals QXY to the N. Now, I didn't always write uh, the of X of X before because these functions were frequently functions of X and Y. They're just functions of X now, so I'm explicitly writing that the of X part so that I know they are not functions of Y. I don't know if that's going to come into play here in particular, but in general, uh, that can be a good idea. So we got row 4y cubed times dy dx plus xy equals xy negative 3. Now, one thing you'll notice, basically, you're going to cancel out the y on the right side when you do this. That should happen every time. So we got 4y cubed dy dx plus 4xy to the fourth equals x. Nope, 4x. Now, you might think, ah, oh, we don't really need the 4 technically correct, but we're going to leave it in. Uh, you could multiply by a fourth right now. I'm not going to, but I will uh, subtract 4x, and then we'll multiply by dx. Let's not do too much at one time. So I'm just going to do the arithmetic first, and then I'll multiply by dx on the next step. Of course, I can factor here. Uh, 4xy to the fourth minus 1 multiply by dx. This appears to be separable, so I don't think it would be the smartest move to go linear to solve this. It is linear as well. Ooh, is that true? Go back to linear x, y. Well, wow, this is not linear. It is separable. Did I get linear in x and oh, I didn't make our u sub yet. So, all right, so this is a good time to talk about uh, there's multiple paths, multiple solution paths. So I happen to notice that this was separable. It's super easy to show it's separable. It basically just divide the uh, y term out. So we got lucky. That's not what I would normally expect on a Bernoulli, but in this case, great. Uh, I'll skip a couple steps here. Oops. And yes, that is a y to the fourth power. dy plus x dx. I uh, multiply by a fourth at the same time. Uh, we do have to be careful. Uh, we're throwing away, I believe, the y equals 1 solution. And when we, or negative 1. because we're dividing by that term. Uh, <clears throat> you can check the uh, y equals 1 or negative 1 very quickly. Probably easiest to check those in the original. So if we look up the original, uh, and I'll just keep using the blue marker, so I'll check right up here in this little empty space we got. Uh, let's see y equals 1, y prime equals 0, and we got 0 plus x times 1 equals x over 1 cubed, which x equals x, good solution. I have a good feeling we're going to get the exact same thing with negative 1. y prime equals 0 again, so we got 0 plus x negative 1 equals x over negative 1 cubed. And we got negative x equals negative x. All right. It's important that you check in the original because there could be a math mistake you made in turning the form into something like this. 
Also, you can introduce uh, slightly different solutions sometimes. So you really want to go back and check everything on the original stated problem, not something you transformed it into. All right, so we took care of the uh, what would have made us divide by zero. So now we can assume down here, we'll go back to the black ink. Uh, we're going to assume that it's not negative one or one, so we're not going to be divided by zero. All right, this is pretty easily uh, seen to be separable. I think a quick u sub right here will knock that integral out. And of course, the other integral is trivial. So I don't think you're going to learn anything by watching me integrate this. So I'm going to write dot, dot, dot. All right, that was not, that was kind of a lucky coincidence or a happy little accident, but that's not the way I want it to go. So we're supposed to be making these changes of variable right here. So let's go ahead and apply those. So I'm not going, going to go the separable route, even though I think that would be the easiest way to solve it. I want to turn this into a linear ODE in X and U. All right, so here we go. What am I doing? Let's write y1 minus negative three, that's y to the fourth. And this is one minus negative three times y to the third, that's du dy, which is four y to the third. All right, let's make these substitutions. You might as well write this one out too. It's four y to the third dy. These are important because I'm going to making these subs and might as well use the actual numbers that I see here. I think it'll be easier for me to make this substitution in written out in this form. So we got four y cubed, which is four y cubed, four y cubed dy is du. All right, that's right here. And now we got 4x. It's okay to leave x's in, but it's not okay to leave y's in. So y to the fourth is u. And we still got that minus one. That was the u right there. And the last dx uh, stays how it is. We should have an x and u variable. All right, this should now be linear. And I'll flip back to linear in my notes. This should all be on your cheat sheet. So if you need to flip back into your notes, uh, you either didn't bring your cheat sheet or your cheat sheet sucks. So you're gonna need a very good cheat sheet for the midterm and for life in general. Anytime you get a differential equation, you need to know how to classify it. So linear, how do we solve linear? So I'm looking back at the beginning of chapter 11 and I'm going to rewrite linear in uh, basically y is now u. As I was saying, y is now u. Uh oh. x u equals q of x. All right, here we go. That's not exactly the form we have, however, so I'll subtract the q of x to this side, and all right, let's figure out what everything is. I believe p of x so much trouble with this. I need to factor out a u minus one. Oh. So 
So I'll distribute, we get 4x u minus 4x, and now it should be a lot more clear. This is difficult because it was too easy. So that would be the right form. So p of x and q of x are both 4x. Okay, so we're ready to solve this. I don't really need to write down a q of x, but q of x would be positive 4x. All right, I do need p of x because our new row, our new integrating factor is e to the antiderivative px dx. So I did have to exactly figure out what is p of x. It was a little bit tricky. Uh, p of x just 4x here. So super easy antiderivative. We got 2x squared like that. So that's our integrating factor. So let's multiply by that. And I like the what form should we use? Should be exact. I'm going to use Let's use the one right above. I think that'll actually 4x. I'll write in this form. I like that one that's at the top of the screen right now. Now multiply by dx. This is supposed to be exact, so all I'm going to do is check the exactness. Unfortunately, I already wrote down P and Q, so I think I used L and M. Whoa, DX just walked away. Not cool. Now, I only noticed that when I was writing it out in this form, because this makes it very easy for me to check does the X derivative of L this is not the y derivative, this is the u derivative of m. Uh, I like that form because I think it's the easiest to take these derivatives. All right, lx, that is ddx of l, ddx of e, 2x squared, which is 2x squared derivative the 2x squared, so that is 4x e to the 2x squared. All right, that is lx, now mu is the u derivative of m. This one should be easy too. Let's write uh, m in a different order. I'm gonna put all the x terms in the front. So it's 4x e to the 2x squared times u minus one. This derivative is actually super simple. That's constant, so that can move in front of the derivative, and we just take derivative, the u derivative of u minus one is one. There we go. This is exact. All right. So you should be happy when things are exact because it's super easy to solve. That's the happy face. Uh, I'd say linear, linear coefficients are probably the worst. That's my angry face, but exact is easy. All right, you need to take the antiderivatives, not of the Lx and Mu, so this is basically separate. This is separate check. And now what we're gonna do is you're gonna union L D X and M oh wow epic fail L D U and M D X 
you're going to get a solution with u's and x's, and of course u is not the original variable, so you're gonna need to take out u somewhere way up here. We should have, no longer have derivatives, so you won't have to worry about taking out the du, but we're gonna use the u equals y to the fourth. That's super important. So we're gonna union those two together, take a little while, do those steps, then un sub uh, u equals y to the fourth. So you need to get back in x's and y's. You should not have any u's at the very end here. Okay, so take uh, some time, pause this video, and solve this. Once you have it solved, check that your solution actually works. Up in the, somewhere way up here, the original. You just gotta put in y prime, basically. Uh, compute y prime once you know y, and then plug it in, see if it works. And do this right now.